So this is a real ignition coil out of a vehicle. Yep, it's pretty ancient. Principles are the same as my little training aid. We have power coming in here. It gets switched on this side, so the primary. This is our primary. This goes down to our switch. Remember how I use that mechanical switch to turn it off and on. Then our secondary comes off of here and the high voltage comes out the top here. So is it any different inside? This one's been cut apart as you can see and it's pretty much identical to what I showed you before. Notice that there's oil in it and that's to keep it cool. The primary, you can see that the winding is quite thick there and the secondary, uh, we probably can't see it, but it is very, very thin inside. So the secondary will be these very fine windings up here. So that's a little more detail. Notice in this one that the primary is on the outside, not on the inside like mine. The secondary is this winding down here. You can see how fine it is. It's very, very fine indeed. Remember, what have we got? About 20,000 uh, turns, I believe. 200 on these and about 20,000 on those. That gives us a step-up transformer. And as you can see right in the middle there, what's that I hear you say? It's a soft iron core. Well done. Static testing of an ignition coil, or in other words, testing it while it's not energised, is not that difficult. Remember, we're looking at a primary and a secondary winding. If we go across our primary, which is the positive and negative terminals here, you can see we've got about 1.7, 1.6. And of course, every manufacturer is going to be different, but that's pretty close for a, a cylinder style of coil. Then we go from our positive across to our secondary output. That should be in the kilo ohm range, generally speaking. This is, uh, what's that, mega ohm? So she's a bit tired, this one. 12.5, uh, generally speaking, you'll probably find about oh, 10 kilo ohm. Uh, that should be the range that a, a secondary cylinder style ignition coil would be in. This one's completely for schnookered. Another style that we find, these were on the earlier Falcons. Um, as you can see, there's our primary across here. Not that hard. And we should measure 0.9 of an ohm. There we go, not a problem. And then we check our secondary, don't we? So it's got positive written just here. Don't know if you can see that or not. Just positive written there. So we'll go from that one across to our secondary. And of course, that should read in the kilo ohm range, 6.9 K ohm. A two wire coil on plug style is pretty simple to check as well. Basically, it's a cylinder style of coil, just that it sits on top of the spark plug. So once again, we check our primary, these two wires in here. And we've got that connected there, and that should give us roughly about 1.5, 1.2. As I said, it will vary. The secondary is up the spout here. Let's check that one. By leaving one side of our multimeter on here, and the other side, I've just had to um, stick a screwdriver in here to get some length, and we should get a reading. We've got no reading whatsoever. I've also checked that wire in case I had the wrong wire. Same deal. Here it says, new and OK. I think not. I believe this fella here that says faulty. Clearly this two wire um, coil and plug coil is had it. In a previous video, I discussed with you what a MOSFET does. And some of these coils have the MOSFET internally and others are controlled via the ECU. In this particular case, this is where the MOSFET is located. Just on the back head there, can you see that? I've just ground it down so that you can see it. And you remember our friend the MOSFET? Okay, so that there is exactly the same style of MOSFET that controls the coil itself. So the MOSFET or the control is done inside this ignition coil. Look, it's pretty important to make sure that you get the correct wiring diagram for the ignition coil that you're working on, particularly with the uh, coil and plug style. This one here is a Bosch style and that's used on the VZ Commodore, etc. But this is a little bit different from the one that we looked at before in the fact that this has two ground ones. As you can see on our wiring diagram here, we have our control signal is number one, so that's our trigger. We have ignition supply, number two, so that's our 12 volts. And then we have an ECU ground, number three, and an engine ground, number four. So you can test them by tying the two three and fours together and grounding them out, and then testing them uh, by putting 12 volts there and then a trigger wire there. So just be aware of how you wire it up so that you don't actually damage the coil while you're trying to test it. This here is a coil pack off an early model Commodore range, I guess you could say. You can see three coils and they're actually in one. It's stuck on top of the DFI module, so accessing the primary side of the circuit is a little bit difficult, but we can access the secondary quite easily. 
So going across here, we should have in the killer ohm range, remember, we've got nothing there, we've got nothing there, but we've got something there. So we've got 10.9 killer ohm. So this section of this coil pack, or the three and, what's that, six, I guess, uh, coil pack is okay. These two are had it. Then GM, in all their wisdom, decided to make three individual coils sitting on the DFI pack, as you can see there. This was just plugged into the unit there, and so it was a lot cheaper to replace individual coils as opposed to that big coil pack. Once again, these coils are quite easy to check because the control circuit, this fella down here, is totally separate. So just going across here, we can see the secondary, 5.35 kilo ohm. That was in the range that we talked about. Let's have a look at the primary. Simply by pulling off the coil here, you can see the two pins are exposed. And if we use just two little separate pins there, stick them in so that we can access the coil primary, we should get a reading of 0.9 of an ohm in this particular case. So that's all good. That's a good coil. For a static test, keep that in mind. Static, not dynamic. It's not being energised, so we can't see if it's breaking down. So what I want to show you now is just a simple way of checking your plug leads and your ignition coil at the same time without doing any extra work. Simply go from one plug lead down through the companion lead out the other side with your multimeter. I'll show you what I mean. So in this case I've pulled off number five and if I just pop my lead in there I'm just using a couple of screwdrivers as extensions to get in deeper into the uh, spark plug lead but if I push down there and I touch this one over here we should get some sort of reading and you can see we're getting a reading of about 9.6 kilo ohms now if I compare that with my other coils and leads included that should give me an average generally speaking including your plug leads on this particular model you're looking at about 9 kilo ohms up to about 13 kilo ohms something along those lines but once again, you need to check. But it's a quick way to check your plug leads and your coils at the same time without doing too much extra work. Another style of wasted spark ignition system is this bloke right here. You can see it's like a coil on plug style. So the coil goes here, but it also feeds another fella over here. So it's just a standard plug lead. And that comes out of this tower right here. But the coil, just like the uh, Commodore range, fires two spark plugs at once. We'll check our primary, we've got 1.3, and we'll check our secondaries and see what they come up like. Now this one here, so I'm getting no reading whatsoever out of this, and that's consistent with what I found yesterday, it just didn't want to fire up properly. So obviously there's an internal breakdown in here. Even if I try this other uh, secondary outlet here, I'm getting no reading whatsoever. And yes, I've tried this wire as well. And to make my life just a touch easier, I've made up these little extension pieces. Now they're made from uh, screwable style spark plug tops. As you can see here, they're the threaded style. And I've put them onto a little brass bar and then uh, soldered them in place. Now I'll show you what they're used for. You saw how I was struggling to try and get a connection on those leads with the uh, waste spark ignition system. This is fantastic. Check it out. So little extension bar. It just pops in like a normal spark plug. It's held in place, it won't go anywhere. And then just push the other one into the other end. And then, then using alligator clips attached to your multimeter, simply clip them in place. And you should be able to quite easily see the resistance reading. Look mum, no hands. So I find these little extender pieces very, very useful, particularly when you're doing stuff like a waste spark ignition system. So what are your thoughts? Is this plug lead any good or is it past its use by date? Is it within specs? So as we've seen, static testing of ignition coils is very limited in what it can achieve. Think of it this way, if you want to check the high resistance in a circuit, what are you going to use? The ohm meter or are you going to do a voltage drop test? Well of course a voltage drop test, why? Because you put it under load. That's what we need to do with ignition systems, put them under load and then check the results via a waveform.